Hello friends, viewers and listeners, welcome again to yet another interactive study of the Word of God. We are in the middle of an amazing series in the crucibles with Christ Jesus. In other words, looking at sufferings, the trials, the pains, you know, that we go through as Christians here on earth, but with Jesus Christ by our side. Um, we've dealt with quite a number of lessons, a number of um, topics already. Uh, the last topic that we dealt with was looking at waiting in the crucible. You know, as we wait patiently when we go through these struggles and these sufferings here on earth, um, what exactly is the end goal? The plans that God has for our lives, how they, they can actually come to fruition as we continue to be patient and wait. Today we are looking at specifically dying like a seed, dying to self. With me to discuss this amazing, interesting topic, on my right I do have Javan. Welcome everyone for today's discussion. Thank you very much. And on my left I do have Beatrice Opio, as always. Thank you so much, uh, Ibrahima. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, for us to get into our discussion proper, we are going to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask, you know, Beatrice to pray for us, please. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you've given us a day such as this, where we can dig, dig deeper into your word and learn what you have in store for us. Open up our hearts and minds and let us listen to you. Keep us connected and let us see the lessons you want us to apply in our daily lives. Plant all these words deep in our hearts and let us be transformed by every single thing that we learn. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. amen. And amen. Thank you very much for that. Um, I want us to look at a text as we begin our discussion today. I'm trying to lay the foundation here. Um, so I'll be looking at John 12, 24. And this is from the New King James Version. John 12, 24 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the, the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. And to give um, at least, you know, a kind of precursory remarks before we get into our discussion proper. Jesus' picture of a kernel of wheat dying is a fascinating analogy of our submission to God's will. First, there is the falling. The kernel that falls from the wheat stalk has no control over where or how it falls to the ground. It has no control over the ground that surrounds and then presses over it. Second, there is the waiting. As the kernel lies in the earth, it does not know what the future holds. It cannot imagine what like what life will be like in the future, for it is only a kernel of wheat. Third, there is the dying. The kernel cannot possibly become a wheat stock unless it gives up its safe, comfortable situation as a kernel. It must die. That is, it must give up what it has always been before, so it may be transformed from a seed into a fruit bearing plant. Now, Javan, I want to turn to you. Um, I want you to talk to us and talk to our listeners and our viewers. If we know that God's will is best for us, why do we have such a hard time accepting it? Help us understand why. Thank you. This question has two components. One, we have knowing the will of God. And then two, submitting to the will of, of God. Now, from the analogy of the kernel, from the wheat, 
we see the element of dying, mm. which symbolizes transformation. Now, some of the things that could be limiting us from submitting to God's will is that we still don't have that full transformation in our lives. Mm. We have not died to self. Mm. We are still clinging to self and not giving room for the Spirit of God to prompt us mm. into God's accepting God's will. Amen. So what makes it hard for us to accept is not dying to self, allowing self to override so that we don't get to God's will. Amen. Amen. Mm. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I mean, and, and B, if you want to actually, you know, buttress or add to what he has said already, I mean, you know, we, we already know that God's will is the best. We, we, I mean, we, we cannot argue with that, right? If we, we know that God's will is the best because his intentions are all good. But, but you know, as human beings, why is it hard? He's laid the foundation already. Why is it hard? I mean, why do you think it's hard for us to just accept it and say, okay, this is God's will. It's awesome. It's great. Let's move on. I think uh, the inherent part of this whole statement is that dying piece. Nobody walks into a situation where you contemplate dying in the way we think about it mm. from our human eyes and not think about what God's promise is. If mm. we don't think about what God's promise is coming ahead, it's a promise of the future. Right. Kind of like that seed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That seed in itself, I remember from my biology class, it told us, we were taught that a seed in itself has enough storage and food to sustain a plant that is growing from the time you plant it to the, way, to the time that it, it grows up into a, a young shoot. Mm. And if we do not understand that, there's a lot of darkness, there's a lot of loneliness in the ground that that seed has to endure. Mm -hmm. And it's in those moments that we feel so unsure that we don't see what that future looks like. Mm. Some of us might be afraid. Some right. of us might feel intimidated that they might not even want to plug into what God has in store for us. Right. And until that self is sacrificed on the cross, and until we take away that self, we will never be able to think beyond what God promises us, that eternal kingdom right. that, he has as assured, that he has assured for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And what I'm hearing from you both is also the aspect of faith, mm -hmm. right? Because if we have faith in God mm -hmm. and we know that his will for us is best, I will go to bed and sleep. Because mm -hmm. I know his intention for me is, 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 is good, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It says that, for I know the thought that I think towards you. Right. Thought of good and not of evil. Mm -hmm. And all I need to do is just to believe that and trust that, mm -hmm. right? right. Uh, and I'll come back to you, B. So contemporary culture urges, you know, all of us, um, to demand and assert our rights. Mm. I mean, we hear that throughout, you know, the world today. Okay. But as Christians, though, I mean, what should be our own attitude? You know, even though contemporary culture is actually urging us, you say, listen, this is your right, assert yourself. But how should we, as Christians, you know, really respond? What should be our, atti uh, our attitude? So one of the things that I really, really um, value is when we look at the Beatitudes. One of the Beatitudes in Matthew 5.5 5 talks about the meek shall inherit the kingdom of earth, the, shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And we live in a world where everything is geared for us, mm -hmm. our comfort, our, what we want, right? Right. We go to jobs so that we can sustain the things we want. Mm -hmm. And we live in a world where selfishness is elevated, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we see that whole, that whole cultural push where we have to demand our rights. Mm -hmm. We have to do what's right for us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget that not only do we have to forget about 
the us. We have to have God in us. Right. Because if we live a life where we only worry about us, guess what's going to happen? We're not going to follow God's word. Right. Not the way he ascribes. Right. The commandments will be hard for us to follow mm -hmm. because I'll be looking out for myself. Mm. And when we are setting our rights, we are trying to fight our own battles. Right. You know, Second Chronicles 2015 tells us that the b battle does belong to the Lord. Amen. We are going to go through difficulties. We are going to go through phases in our lives where we are not going to get what we want. Mm -hmm. And we have to trust God right. and God's timing. And I'm so excited about the crucible in itself because it teaches us that God prepares us. God molds us right. into people who can inherit that eternal kingdom. In our own state, we are so sinful. Right. We don't deserve to be able to inherit that kingdom of God. That's right. Now imagine in your sinful nature, you're trying to demand my rights, mm -hmm. my rights. How is that going to work out? Right. And that is where I want us to focus on. Mm -hmm. Because without, without God in us, we'll never be meek. That's right. Without God in us, we'll never be able to follow his word. That's right. And we will never be able to inherit his word. Amen. Kingdom. Amen. Thank you very much. I'm coming back to you, Brother Javan. I mean, do you have something to say to what, you know, uh, Sister Beatrice has said already? Because this is crucial. I mean, this is what the world wants us to do. The world wants us to demand our rights, wants us to assert ourselves. But as Christians, I mean, she has already laid the foundation here. What do you think we should do? What should be our attitude? Because we, yeah. we are God's children. Yeah, I want should to. we follow the world? Mm hmm I want to borrow from Philippians chapter 2, okay. verse 5. In some versions, it, it talks of, let this mind be in you, which mm. was also in Jesus Christ. Right. Mm. In some versions, it talks of, adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. And what is this mind which was also in Jesus Christ? Mm. The mind of? humility That's right. mm. and mm. obedience. Mm. Now, we all know that from the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ was there. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us that Jesus was in the form of God, mm -hmm. but he did not consider equality with God. Mm -hmm. Jesus mm. had all the privileges. That's right. Mm -hmm. He had all the powers. He had all the rights mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. But he had to forfeit all these privileges and the powers just to come down to this sinful world mm. to save man. Mm. Mm. When he was incarnated, he had to bear the pains and sufferings of this world. Mm. So right. we look at Jesus leaving his comfort zone and coming to endure pain and suffering mm. here on earth. So that is the same attitude that the Bible is calling us to. Wow. The attitude of humility and obedience. Amen. The attitude of dying to self and elevating others in our place. Mm -hmm. Showing concern, great concern, mm. or salvation of others. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for Amen. pointing. That's powerful. And our listeners, our Amen. viewers, you know, uh, just to uh, reflect on what Javan just said. I mean, let this mind in you, I mean, the mind in Christ Perfect. Jesus be in you. Uh, yeah. And so that's exactly how we should actually respond. That should be our own attitude, the mm -hmm. attitude of Christ, an attitude of, of humility, you know, um, not not being puffed up mm. or elevating ourselves, mm -hmm. but looking unto Jesus and follow his footsteps, his examples. Javan, I want to turn back to you. In the book of Romans, actually, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul actually wants, to, he wants us to offer ourselves as mm -hmm. a living sacrifice. I mean, what does that actually simply mean? Offering our lives, ourselves, as living sacrifice unto the Lord Jesus. When you look at the Bible, there are several instances where Paul refers to offering ourselves as a living 
uh, a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I want to borrow from the book of Philippians chapter 4. Okay. There he also talks of l offering ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. And also in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. Is that what you want us to read? Their yep. fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. So in this context, we are finding that the, the, the sacrifice was kind of service. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking of living sacrifice, we are talking of services. Mm -hmm. Our lives as Christian in totality, we should give it up for the service of God. That's right. Yeah, so when Paul is talking of live, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, it means in, in entirety, mm -hmm. our life should glorify God, mm -hmm. or we should give it, or use our life fully for the service of God. That's right. Amen. Thank you. B, do you want to add to, to, to what you said already? Offering ourselves as living sacrifice unto the Lord uh, is made the point. And I agree with you. I think that's, an, uh, that's a great point. And, you know, when we walk with God, he gives us that clarity day to day so that we can be able to have an understanding mm -hmm. of what his word and what his intentions are in our, in our lives. Right, right. And until we are willing to be servants, until mm -hmm. we are willing and open to his prompting, mm -hmm. we will never be able to provide that service. Right. And as a result, we'll never be able to understand his intentions. So true. And we'll never be able to understand his purpose. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I still wanted to, I want to fo focus on you a little bit here. I wanted to look at, you know, um, a different aspect at this point. Now, in a hectic and distracted world, I mean, we all know that this world is is getting hectic by the day, and it's been is distracted as well. Um, how can we cultivate openness to God's voice and and decisiveness? You know, with with the things that are going on around us, right? And they tend to distract us, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, but how can a Christian believer? right and you and i as christians how can we just you know cultivate that openness to listening to the voice of god and his decisiveness i think uh one of the things that i um i can relate to uh one of the lessons that we were learning with the children today was talking about how much the devil comes to us hmm. You know, the devil does not show up looking with, you know, looking at, 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 at with us from what we imagine from the books that we read as children. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come to us as a scary person. He doesn't come to us with uh, telling us, Ibrahim, I want to tempt you. Mm -hmm. It's through those distractions That's right. that block us away from God's word. Mm -hmm. It's those things that we care about. We care about, you know, the noise that happens around us mm. and if you pay attention to that noise long enough the you know the care about your income your social standing your what you're going to wear today mm. these things distract us so much that's right and we care so much about them that sometimes we forget to cultivate that open relationship with god mm -hmm. one of the things that i was very impressed with this lesson is when um when us, God was calling Samuel, mm -hmm. and Samuel could hear it, and he thought it was Eli calling him. Mm -hmm. And it's every so often he would go back to Eli, and Eli would say, no, 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 I'm not calling you. Mm -hmm. And then finally he figured it was the voice of the Lord calling, right. and instructed Samuel on what to do. And until you're plugged in, until you're intentional about that relationship, mm. until you have cultivated a relationship with God, mm. you'll never be able to hear his voice. He'll talk to you in that gentle whisper. Mm. He will guide you during different aspects of your life. Amen. And until you spend time 
and you've been intentional about that walk with God, mm -hmm. you'll never be able to hear that voice. You'll that's never right. be able to discern that's right. that that's God guiding us. Mm. And when, when, when we talk about being spiritually blind and being spiritually deaf, mm. it doesn't mean physically that you're blind or deaf. It's you are so far removed. We have right. so many distractions that far remove us from God's word mm -hmm. and God's voice that we fail to hear and follow the direction he's given Amen. us. Amen. Amen. Javan, I'm coming to you in a second, but I, I love, you know, B, you've just, this is very powerful, by the way. And I remember when we were having, I think, a meeting here, and I think it was your son that was actually crying outside. And you, and, and you stood up, you said, that's my son crying. Mm -hmm. And, and the reason why I brought this up, because you said if you do not, if you are not intentional in, in actually being in connection, in, tune, in being in relationship with, with Christ, right. you're not going to be able to hear him. And because this is her son, she has a relationship with her son, she knows from afar when he was crying. That's powerful. And then he goes also vice versa. The child would hear the voice of the mother and say, that's my mom. That's powerful. And that can only happen and be cultivated, you know, when, they, when there's a relationship. There's that it's, connection. It's, it's, it's powerful. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Javan, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, uh, maybe I can add this. Um, from the scenario of Samuel, which she has just mentioned, we are seeing the angel of the Lord calling Samuel. And he was ready to present himself. Mm -hmm. Here is your servant. Talk, I will listen. listen. Meaning he was very subjective mm -hmm. to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God speaking unto mm -hmm. him. That's right. And the Holy Spirit of God can only speak to us when we have a very strong relationship with our God. So we can cultivate the mind of openness and decisiveness Yes. when we strengthen our closeness with our God. Amen. That is the point when God is able to speak to us through his Holy Spirit. Yes. And we will be able to respond to accordingly respond. to the, the voice that speaks to Amen. us. Amen. I love and, uh, that. Allow me to, to interject also. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was very important that I mentioned this, this piece as well. When we turn on our electrical wires, when we turn on our electrical lights, mm -hmm. the lights come, the, lights, the light bulb lights up, right? right? Right. But you never, when you look at that bulb in itself, you'll never see the electricity that is generated mm -hmm. that runs that light bulb, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you, all you see is the result of that electrical flip that's right mm -hmm. of the switch mm -hmm. but behind that light bulb what made it light up is is miles and miles away mm -hmm. of a generator that did all that work mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. how we are as christians mm -hmm. when we shine when our lights shine when we walk with christ and mm -hmm. we are, we can be recognized as sons and daughters of god it's not because of anything else it's not if you look at me and shake me around you will not god will you know you might you might see god's word you mm -hmm. might see that result of that connection with god come out right but mm -hmm. that connection is based on a on a connection that is generated miles and miles mm -hmm. away god right. is mm -hmm. in me and Absolutely. makes that light possible yeah. Absolutely. and if that connection is broken it doesn't matter how many times I flip off that switch, mm -hmm. the bulb will not come on. Mm, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Thank you for, for pointing that out. Javan, I want to focus, I want to come back to you. Um, you know, you and I know our personal experiences reveal to us our fragile and imperfect nature. The human being is just frail. You, you and I know that. Why do we continue to rely on ourselves? <laughs> Even though we know for sure <laughs> that we are fallen human beings, we are frail. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, as Christians, we are living in the world. And we know that the king of the, this world is Satan himself. Claiming. 
claiming to be the mm. king. Yeah, <laughs> claiming to be the king. Mm. At the same time, we are also on the, uh, uh, we are Christians. Right. We are on the Christ side. There is the power of God, the Holy Spirit, claiming us as his people. Yes. At the same time, we are battling, Satan is battling to win us That's on, right. the, on his camp. Now, it calls for the transformation that we are talked about. Yeah. And strengthening our relationship with, with our God. That's right. So we should be cautious when we have realized of our weaknesses, our fragility, mm -hmm. but we want to still cling on them. Then what, who is making us to continuously cling into these infirmities mm -hmm. or fragilities? Mm -hmm. It is the Satan who is trying to draw us back. Mm. As we try to move towards God, mm. Satan is also out to drag us behind mm. so that we are not progressive in our faith mm. so i think what is dragging us or what is uh, making us to cling onto these experiences mm -hmm. is that satan does not want us to be progressive in our faith that's right he does not want us to strongly work for our faith and be on God's side so right. we have to be cautious knowing very well that Satan is not happy mm -hmm. with us as Christians. As we work for God, as our faith increases, mm -hmm. Satan is also increasing mm -hmm. his speed with which he wants to distract us yeah. and maybe win us back mm. to his camp. Amen. 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 That's powerful. B, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. And, and if you want to add to what he has said, Please do, because um, real quick to our listeners and our viewers, there is a cosmic battle going on. The fight between good and evil, that's what, you know, Javan is talking about. The battle of the soul. Satan is dragging us on the left. God, at the same time, is drawing us to himself. And whose side are we supposed to be on? The side of God, because he is stronger. He has the better plan for us and not the enemy. Do you have something to say? Yes, I do. So one of the lessons that we, you know, some, one of the highlights that was um, brought up in this lesson is the story of Saul. Saul was, when Saul became the king of Israel, mm -hmm. God chose him. Yeah. God knew his weaknesses, God knew, knew his shortcomings, and God knew that he would need his help to be able to be That's right. the king that he is meant to be. Mm -hmm. Saul also had a unique quality. Mm -hmm. He was willing to be taught, he was teachable, and he was open to God's guidance. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we see countless times that, you know, he, will, he would seek God's, God's uh, direction mm -hmm. before making major steps. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> as he became the king, and probably he got the accolades that come with being right. a king, he became very self-confident and he became self-reliant. Mm. And what happens as a result of that overconfidence, he starts substituting his own judgment mm -hmm. to God's judgment. Mm -hmm. And when, they, when, when he had the battle at Gilgal, mm -hmm. when he showed up to battle, God had already given him instructions mm -hmm. through Samuel. And there was a delay which happened based on what God's word was mm -hmm. and b his faith was tested mm -hmm. he looked at the evidence and he saw the Philistines were ready to fight he mm -hmm. saw all this movement right and he thought to himself wow I have to do something mm -hmm. so when you boil that down to it was his own human perception mm -hmm. that became his folly yeah not only did it become his folly at that point he made steps that God had not allowed him to make. Right. He made the burnt offering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before Samuel got there. And mm -hmm. when Samuel got there, Samuel rebu rebuked him. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, for somebody who had relied on the Holy Spirit and relied on God to be the leader, that would have been a sign to step back and say, oh, mm. I did something that was not expected. Right. Mm -hmm. He went ahead. And he felt so much malice yes. 
about that rebuke. And when we look at Saul as a, as a, as a, as a case study, he ended up, God ended up appointing somebody else yes. because of this sin, because mm -hmm. of this folly. Mm -hmm. And it boils down to your points. Mm -hmm. It is the devil who is fighting for our souls. Yes. And until we understand too, we are sinful in our own nature. And in our own nature, we want what's best for us. What's mm -hmm. best for us, I say that in quotes, yeah. because it's based on our own perspe mm -hmm. perspective, right. mm -hmm. not God's. And we need God to iron out all those mm -hmm. falls mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. in our lives to be able to have that clear vision Absolutely. of what His will is for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's powerful. Well, thank you very much for pointing that out, you know, to uh, listeners and our viewers. And, and I'm coming back to you, B, because we are wrapping up our discussion for today. And the, so far, the lesson has been very, very interesting and, you know, um, educating. Many people, including Christians, they, we, we suffer from, from stress and, and, and is there a reason, you know, B, I want you to talk to us and, and talk to our listeners and viewers. Is there a reason why we are so much under stress? And, 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 and that's the truth. But what is God's answer? There's so much stress, and I agree with you. We have so many things especially when we are separated from the love of God, we pay attention to things that we shouldn't pay attention to. Yes. In most situations, you see people start paying attention to who's more successful than I am, mm. who has more than I am, mm. who's doing better than I am. And that can cause a lot of depression, mm. right? Mm -hmm. We've substituted God's wisdom and God's judgment for our own logic mm. based on what we've experienced in the past right yeah. mm -hmm. and then when we also do that we also block that god's divine solutions to our problems right? right right and then we try to escape reality by not only substituting god's word but we try to pacify our own problems i tell i i, I tell myself and i've tried to kind of look at that from our generation mm -hmm. we live in a generation where there's so much distraction back to a point that i made earlier right we have so much tv we have so much internet we have so much things mm -hmm. that we care so much about that if we don't have any of these things it's easy for us to be depressed that's right and it causes that stress as a result mm -hmm. The wild solution to our problems is you need, to be, you need to be more cunning, you need to use your logic, you need to work harder. But God's solution is all you need to do is ask. If yes. you knock, I will open the door. Amen. As we pursue the wild solution, a lot of us end up in situations where our health is compromised. Mm. And we have that divine connection with God. Right. All we have to do is continue serving, being open mm -hmm. to God's leading. Mm -hmm. He will help us avoid, we'll become content. Mm -hmm. Not because we have everything in the world. We have God in our side. Yes. I'm talking about, when I, when I talk about this lesson too, we also are, t we are also taught about the, the Zechariah story. Mm -hmm when they're trying to build the, the temple. Right. Mm. And um, I don't want to mess up these names, but Zechariah and Zerubbabel, was, Zerubbabel was the one who faced a lot of, a lot of mm. um, opposition as right. he was bringing together the people who were supposed to build the temple, to rebuild the temple. Mm -hmm. If they were relying on their own strength, they would have listened to all of this opposition yeah. and being discouraged. But they had to plug into the higher power, which That's is God, right. mm -hmm. to be able to seek what God's intention was. Yes. It didn't matter what was happening around them. The battle really does belong to God. Yes. It doesn't matter what is going on around us. That's so with true. God, he gives us that peace of mind. And with that peace of mind, it is an antidote to the depression that we see around us. That's right. And he guiding us 
will be able to help us avoid those things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Powerful, Thank powerful. Thank you very much. Um, as, we, as we wrap up, Javan, I want to give you the last word here. What, what, what do you have to say here? I mean, you know, because the world is full of just <laughs> stressful yeah, yeah, it is stuff true. out there. It is true. It is true that we are living in a world surrounded by so much stress. And many a times you'll find that as human beings, we try to reach out to other things that substitute God mm -hmm. in the name of looking for comfort, psychological comfort, yeah. from the distress that we are going through as human beings. Mm -hmm. But just from the story that B has given of in the book of Zachariah. Right. Zerubbabel was told not not by your power, Mom, not by. your not might, but, but by spirit my spirit. Yes. Yeah. It is only through the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Working in us mm -hmm. that we will be able to go through these stresses. Not substituting our situations or conditions with other things. You know, when someone is stressed, you may think that you'll get satisfaction by watching TV, by yes. calling friends, by reading other articles. But it is by the Holy Spirit of God Amen. that we are able to go through Amen. these stresses. Yeah. And allow me to make a point that yes. I, I completely forgot. I think this is a pertinent point that we need to point out as well. Mm -hmm. The story of Samson. Yes. Really, that is a very beautiful story mm -hmm. when we think about it. Samson was given that power to have so much strength. Yes. But throughout all the time that God gave him that power and he was able to conquer the Philistines and able to conquer, to have all these amazing feats, right. tearing the lion by his bare arms, mm. the hands, mm -hmm. we see that it is through his following God's covenant. Yes. Following God's promise, keeping, keeping God's promise by not shaving his hair, mm -hmm. his strength was restored. Yes. His strength never came from the hair. Mm -hmm. His mm -hmm. strength came from keeping the covenant That's right. of God. That's right. So when he faced adversity, when Delilah came and took him off his path, mm -hmm. and he ended up having his hair shaved, mm -hmm. he lost his strength. That's true. But one of the things that humbles me and really gives me courage about Samson, not only did he lose his hair, he, lose, he lost his vision. Yeah. A strong mm -hmm. man who was highly revered mm -hmm. was reduced to nothing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But even in those situations, as, 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 as low as he sank, his final act became a focus of what we look at today yeah. as mm -hmm. Samson. Yeah. When he asked God, mm -hmm. that is uh, from the book of Judges 16, I believe, yeah. Mm -hmm. He stood on the pillars and he said a prayer asking God to give him strength. Yes. In his weakness, mm -hmm. he was at his weakest point. He yes. couldn't even see. He yeah. had to be led by a servant yes. to the pillars. Mm -hmm. And he was able to push the pillars. Mm -hmm. And in that one act of faith, he was able to have to vanquish more men yes. in his weakness yes. with God's strength than he had ever vanquished prior to when he had Amen. the strength. So this is what I'm trying to make the point. With God's power within us, he transforms our weakness. Mm -hmm our weaknesses mm. and he makes us strong yes we don't pretend that we are better than everybody else if mm -hmm. god is in our in our mm -hmm. midst mm -hmm. he transforms us Absolutely. and in that transformation if we have the faith and we have the ability to reach out to him the strength he provides for us mm -hmm. will help us conquer amen move mountains and mm -hmm. do things that are impossible amen if only we believe. If only we believe. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in, you both, uh, to join me here and, you know, have an interactive study of this amazing topic, mm -hmm. dying like a seed. And, you know, in all of these, let's not lose sight of the fact that we are dealing with 
sufferings, pains, trials. In the midst of all of these, we are not alone. We are with Christ Jesus. Amen. He has promised that he will never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. And uh, till we meet again here, I hope that what we have discussed, the lessons that we have learned would have blessed somebody, would have actually encouraged somebody out there that is actually going through some of these experiences in life. You know, the Bible is very clear. I mean, Paul even makes it very clear that he said he is happy when he is weak. Why? Because in his weakness, he has been promised that the Lord will make his strength perfect. And that's what we need. That's what you and I need. Mm -hmm. Christ is there to strengthen you and I. The Holy Spirit is there to strengthen you and I in our weaknesses. And if we trust in him, believe you me, the end results, they're always going to be good. Amen. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, a brother here, Javan, to, to close for us in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Gracious Master in heaven, our Lord and our Redeemer. We want to thank you so much because when we were starting this session, we invoked your Holy Spirit to guide us. Lord, we have discussed the topic dying like a seed. Lord, we have learned that you require us to totally submit to your will. But before this is done, we have to die to self. It is by the power of your Holy Spirit that we can shape up all this in us as human beings. Lord, we want to pray for your strength. We want to pray for your power. Jehovah God to transform our lives, Jehovah God. That whenever you speak unto us, we may always incline our ears so that we may listen and you speak to our hearts. We want to pray even for our dear listeners and viewers of this program all over the world that Jehovah God you may bless us. Even as we end this session, Jehovah God, we want to pray for your will to prevail that in everything that we do, we may give you honor and glory. Above all, may you prepare us for your son, son soon return. For this, my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen.